People turn to face you when you enter a room without saying a word because they automatically recognize you as someone important and in control. But how do they know that we're talking about leading without speaking today? Do you believe it's possible? How can silence convey so much? Well, welcome to the world of silent leadership, chapter one on body language. It's easy to ignore the body's powerful language, but let me assure you that your posture, gestures, and expressions all communicate more about who you are than any words could ever hope to convey. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that the leader is here. Let's start with posture. Good posture isn't just good for your back. It's an advertisement of your self-confidence. Imagine two guys walking into a room. The first guy shuffles in, eyes down, shoulders slumped. The second guy strides in. You're up it's important to not shy away from your own existence. Tall, chest out, shoulders back, and not afraid to occupy the space that is rightfully yours. Let's also talk about movement. Your gait and your movements convey a certain something. Quick, fidgety movements are one example. You're not only in charge of the situation, you're also in control of yourself. You're not just in control, you're uncertain, anxious, and maybe even afraid. People recognize these cues immediately when they see someone moving purposefully and in control, they know they are dealing with a leader. Next, notice the facial expressions, a serious, confident smirk, a stern face, and don't dare say, I can't control how I move. You are the puppet master, not a puppet being manipulated by life. You control your movements and make them work for you. Each can be appropriate according to the circumstances, but you have to know when to wear a witch since an expression that never changes is about as helpful as a broken clock. Yes, it makes sense to do it twice daily, but otherwise, all the incorrect signals would be sent in. With all of this body language, you might be tempted to wonder if it's really necessary. To that, I reply, why would you handicap yourself? Why would you take one of the most powerful tools in your arsenal and toss it aside? Being a leader means having control over oneself. Control the circumstances. Control how others see you. Nobody said leadership was easy, but whoever said it was, that's the head that wears the crown. This is a path that requires everything of you, if you're up for it. Start with your body language, look in the mirror, and watch yourself move and make those changes. Remember that your mediocre efforts aren't fooling anyone. If you want to be a leader, live it out rather than just say it. Chapter 2. Making strong eye contact. Have you ever felt as though someone could see right into your soul by the sight in their eyes? They could see your anxieties, your shortcomings, and your strengths. That is the power of making strong eye contact. They also serve as a billboard for confidence, which is essential for leadership. Without it, why would anyone follow you? Why would I want to follow someone who lacks confidence in themselves and hesitates to make decisions? However, I don't believe that making weak eye contact is a dead giveaway that I'm a little insecure. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm nervous. I'd rather be anywhere, but this is where strong eye contact comes in. It's not just about looking someone in the eye. It's about maintaining that gaze without letting it waver. You're not trying to stare down a grizzly bear. Rather, you're trying to convey that you're serious and that you mean business. The other person keeps averting your gaze. You're probably wondering what he's hiding or whether I should trust him. Well, if he looks you in the eye and maintains that gaze, you think this guy is serious, and that means business. You've ever seen a lion stare down at its prey? It's intense, focused, and done yielding. That's the kind of intensity you want to convey. Mental fortitude. Imagine yourself walking on a thin, high-altitude beam suspended above the ground. You wouldn't be able to walk on it you would be falling into a chasm of fear. The beam seems to be getting narrower, and the ground appears far away. Then, you take a deep breath, steady your gaze, tighten your grip, and, one step at a time, you traverse the beam that my friend is in life. Mental toughness is exemplified by the beam, which stands for overcoming our worries. The amygdala is a part of the brain that causes fear, and I promise you that everyone will have it again. The difference is that instead of letting fear rule you, you have to not only endure pain but also overcome obstacles and thrive in this environment. You should push through even when everything seems to be working against you. As a leader, you must possess this strength. Mental strength does not mean having no fears. Rather, it means facing your fears head-on and not allowing them to rule you. Why? Because leadership isn't easy. It involves responsibility, decision-making, and frequently making compromises. 
As a leader, you'll encounter criticism and failures. It's also not about being in the spotlight or having power or influence. You may have had many failures, but what really makes you stand out is your ability to persevere in the face of hardship. How do you develop this mental toughness? First, acknowledge that mistakes are a necessary part of life. Rather than allowing them to destroy you, learn from them and use them as a chance to get better. Second, adopt an optimistic outlook. The difficulties you encounter aren't obstacles. Rather, they're opportunities that will only make you stronger. Acknowledge at last that being a leader entails constant learning and development. Mental power is something you develop like a muscle, and much like a muscle that requires regular workouts, it is not something you were born with. Develop the mental strength to overcome anxieties, accept difficulties, and learn from mistakes. Recall that a leader isn't someone who never makes mistakes or has difficulties. A great leader is someone who, in the face of obstacles and setbacks, remains composed and prepared to tackle any situation that arises. This is the epitome of mental toughness. Chapter 4 Putting Everything into Practice Won't Work Unless the Cornerstone of Silent Leadership, Self-Assurance, is Possessed. This quality enhances all other aspects of leadership and is defined as an unwavering belief in one's own abilities, a firm belief in one's own worth, and the certainty that one can and will overcome any challenge that comes one's way. It also involves confidence in the people one surrounds oneself with, so it's important to avoid being a jerk or a dictator. Even if my name wasn't Jake, I knew a man who operated a modest company. Jake was a capable, industrious, and committed individual who possessed all the necessary abilities to be a superb leader, but his ploys treated him so poorly that it wasn't good for him. They disregarded his instructions and questioned every choice he made, not all of them, but you get the idea basically walking all over him. Jake was now furious and confused, unable to understand why he wasn't receiving the respect he deserved. One day, he approached me for guidance, and we enjoyed a small amount of coffee together. I don't remember the location, not that it matters, but we just talked about his problems, and I looked at him, and he slouched, avoided eye contact, fidgeted with his cup, and his demeanor just lacked the confidence that a leader would show. Jake claims that this wasn't a lack of confidence in his abilities or skills, but rather a lack of self-assurance. Even though he had all the skills he could possibly need, he didn't project the confidence that he needed to lead. Even though he had all the skills he could possibly require, the man didn't walk around in a way that said, please don't talk to me, and his employees could tell that. So he's standing up, keeping eye contact, and speaking in a firm, clear voice, I recorded him so he could watch it again. And Jake started using these skills in his day-to-day -day activities. He ordered coffee, asked for directions, and even talked to his dog. It was great, and he was really committed. Next, we worked on his mindset, which we identified as a strength, and we celebrated his accomplishments. Jake even started keeping a wind journal, which is a great thing. But over time, he started to believe in his abilities and worth. Jake underwent a complete ash change. It did not occur overnight. I got to sit in the front row for a journey that was full of ups and downs, but in any case, it's a source of self-assurance. Groove, so did his workers regard for him today? My guy is doing great, and while there's always room for improvement, that's just life. Startup is flourishing, his staff looks up to him, and everyone appreciates his leadership, so at least that aspect of his life has completely changed. We won't discuss the other aspects of his life because that isn't your business. This is Jake's story, and it may be yours as well. You see, self-assurance is a skill that you have to work on. Fostering it begins with embracing who you are, identifying your assets, and then realizing how valuable you are. Develop a positive outlook and a firm belief that you can accomplish anything you set your mind to. Self-assurance can be your subliminal declaration to the world that you are a leader, one who doesn't need to raise his voice to be heard or to use a fist to assert his authority. Your self-assurance will speak for itself. Your silent confidence commands respect and admiration. Silent leadership isn't about not saying anything. Rather, it's about making your presence felt. And that's what you, my friends, are capable of. So, you know, oh, the video is over. You're ready to become that leader. I really should hope that you are aware that you will be walking on glass. Yes, there are many better metaphors out there, but for now, 
I'm going to stop the film. Barefoot at first, you might bleed, but be assured that it will transform. It's a horrible metaphor.